Hey shooters, welcome to a, an episode of Pat's How Does This Thing Work? Or How Does It Work? Today's little lesson, or information hopefully, uh, that I hope to impart to you will be on the Benelli Inertia System. Well, it's also applicable to anything in the Benelli line, whether it's a Vinci or a Super Sport or whatever, and to the very popular Stoger M3000, the M3K, they all run the same way. All these inertia guns run under the same principle, and that principle is what I want to explain to you now. Let's start with terminology. I've got my manual out here, and there'll be a still photo right about now. So you can check out the still photo. And recognize that this is called the bolt, and this is called the locking head. Bolt and locking head. In between these two is the inertia spring. The inertia spring is something that you can't compress with normal finger pressure. It's a very, very stiff spring. But this one, in fact, this gun and this gun, I've installed very lightweight springs in just for a visual aid. So when it's, this is the locking head, and it's locked, in fact, locked into the barrel extension of an M2 barrel. See how it's locked in? No. Twin lugs, command, rotate, lock in place. So when this is locked in place, and the barrel is locked into the receiver via the magazine tube nut, this and this is all one piece at the moment of firing. The only thing that isn't directly attached mechanically without the ability to move independently is the bolt. The bolt, in between again, between the bolt mill and the locking head is the inertia spring that I can compress right there. Find a clue? Is it making sense to you? Here we go. This is locked into this, this is locked into the receiver, this is, this is how it is locked up into, into the gun. At the moment of firing, the locking head compresses the inertia spring. The bolt stays stationary for just a small moment in time. So the bolt stays stationary, the locking head compresses the inertia spring, storing energy in the inertia spring, and then that energy is released during the recoil cycle, and as it does, it moves backwards and rotates the locking head, unlocking it in the same direction, unlocks it, and then the extraction and feed cycle can begin. That's in its most simplest form. There's really not much more to it. There's a lot of engineering that had to come up with a proper spring rate, the proper weight of bolt. Now, a little bit of lightning in the bolt. You might notice a difference in recoil. I don't think so. You might notice a difference in the cycle. I really don't think so. I've experimented with all that. I don't believe it's an appreciable difference. Um, but what you will do is change the operating parameters of the gun. Now, if you understand that this whole unit has to recoil rearward, and compress and store energy in the inertia spring, you will understand that if you make this too light, it will try to move rearward with the rest of this piece of equipment and not allow the inertia spring to store enough energy. If you made this out of aluminum, the gun will not work. Okay, so making it really light reduces the ability for the gun to operate reliably. If you make this really light, you have to have a much heavier payload. In other words, you have to use an ounce and a quarter uh, payload at 1,300 feet per second to shove the bolt, the, the locking head, back into the inertia spring to store energy because this thing is trying to move back at the same rate. So your recoil velocity has to increase to overcome this being too light, in other words, not having enough mass. So if you make this heavier, it works even better. That's why you see the speed bolt the speed bolt in the Vinci has a tungsten insert. Tungsten is heavier than steel. That makes the bolt heavier than a standard unit, and therefore it operates in a greater window on the lower end loads. In other words, it will run a lighter load than the standard uh, Vinci. The speed bolt will run a lighter load because the bolt is heavier, allowing for more energy to be stored in the inertia spring. Interesting experiment you might want to try sometime is take the recoil pad off your inertia operated gun. Take the recoil pad off, put your normal three gun load in it, put it up against an immovable object, you know, a big fence post or a wall or something, and touch off around. It won't cycle. The receiver, the barrel, the locking head, all have to recoil in time and space, compressing the inertia spring in the bolt to store energy in the bolt to operate. And if it can't move rearward, it can't store energy. Put the recoil pad back on, put it against the same wall fence or whatever have you, whatever, what have you, and the gun will cycle. It cycles better with heavier loads because it's storing more energy. And at some point, the energy, the spring gets to coil bind, and it's not going to store any more energy. So that, that's all engineered into the gun. 
So lighter weight bolts make the gun less uh, uh, able to operate at the lower end loads and offering more resistance to the gun recoiling rearward can stall the gun too. So use uh, you know, 3-gram, 1,200 foot second, ounce and eighth loads in your inertia operated gun. It'll be a happy, happy gun. Keep it lubed and clean. It'll run and serve you well. And hopefully it'll serve you well to drag you out and up and on top of the podium at your next match. So there you have it. I hope this will help you understand how the inertia system operates in your inertia driven firearm. Talk to you guys later. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye for now.